Okay, so I'm doing a video uh, right now. I got a request, got a, got a request uh, from a student uh, to do a video from Section 5. Point, from Objective 5.2, which I think is due tonight. So let me just I start from this point because I don't typically start here from here with, with, with here from here with, uh, with you guys. Let me show you something here. I'm working ahead, and uh, I'm done with 5.2, so it's forcing me into 5.3. But if I click there, I can go up here and I can go back to 5.2, right? 5.2 is done. Now it says I've learned all the topics in subjective and I gotta update my filters. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna review. See that? And it lets me redo anything I wanna redo. And I wanted to pull this up because uh, I wanna be able to click the buttons and get the green like, like, uh, like you guys do. So, all right. So where is it? It's right here. Understanding conceptual components. Uh, of the enthalpy of solution. All right, so let's look at this, and I may need to go back and forth my whiteboard some, which I have not pulled up yet. Um, and let me go here. All right, so back to here, right here. Okay, so the small amount of methanol, and here's my methanol right here, is dissolved in a large amount of water. So water's the solute, and methanol is the solvent, right? Because it says small, that's my solute. I don't know if I said that right, but now I'm going to say it again. Small amount is my methanol, so that's going to be my solute, right? And here's my solvent, a large amount of water. Imagine separating this process into four stages sketched below. These sketches show only a portion of the substances, so you can see the density and distribution of atoms and molecules in them. They're just sketches, they're cartoons. So let me go over here um to the whiteboard and say for a second now suppose we're starting out this is uh, situation a and suppose this is the energy all right some kind of graph okay here's situation a well uh and remember now that things generally like to be Together. And if you can think about this, things like to be together, that's, that's, a, that's a huge uh, simplification. And I know I'm going to get, other chemists are watching this, they're going to get mad at me for saying this. And they're going to go, that's not fair to say that. And I'm going to say, well, actually, it's super useful. All right. So think about it like that. Things like to be together. So if I talk about a situation in which I've got uh, four X's and then I do something to it and watch what happens. Uh, how, let's call this situation, oh, I don't know, F, and this situation, G, right? Tell me, if this is the energy of situation F, where is G? Is it above it or below it? Well, if things like to be together, that means I've got to invest energy into it to get it to G. So G is higher in energy, right? So that's what's going on here in this scenario, okay? The energy is going up because things like to be together. So I'm separating those out, no matter what they are, right? Okay, there are a couple exceptions to that, but I don't think we're gonna see those uh, now, right? So things generally like to be together. So if we go back to our picture here, do you see how I've got my methanol, there's my solute, and here's my solvent, and the solvent doesn't change in our imaginary uh, um, situation, but we do, oh, we separate the solute out, right? And so we know then that in order f uh, for A going to B, it's going to be uphill because we're separating things out, right? Now let's go back over here and look at C. Well, this, the methanol, the solute doesn't change here from B to C, but the sol solvent does, right? The water we separate out. You see that? So we make more holes. So we're doing even more separations. Therefore, C is going to be higher yet, right? C is going to go even higher. And so let's go back now. And then D, ah, we bring everything together, right? You see that? The, the, um, the solvute goes into these holes for the solvent, right? And we bring things together. So this is going to go down. D is definitely going to go down. Now, how far down is it going to go? If it goes down, does it go, well, I don't know, to there? Or does it go to there? We don't know, right? Aha. Okay. If D is lower than A, then we're going to say it's an exothermic process. 
If it's higher than A, you see from A to D, then it would be, in one scenario, we would go, the overall process goes down if D is here, right? But if D is here, then the overall process goes up. So we're gonna say, let's say red is exothermic, or we're gonna get heat out of it, heat's gonna be released. Let's go do a different color. But let's say that's, let me go back to red for a second. Say the final scenario for D is here, but what about if the final, final uh, place for D is here? Let's say that's the final place for D. Over here with red, we're saying that was, okay? Well, if, if it goes to here, then you see the overall energy from the beginning to the end, right? This is A is the beginning, D is the end. We're gonna say that's endothermic, all right? Or the change in energy is, or change in enthalpy is positive. Can you see how the green is pointing up? That's a change in enthalpy that's positive. The red is pointing down, that's a change in enthalpy that is negative, okay? So let's go look back over here. And it says here that, uh, Four stages, sketch them below, use only a portion of such and such. It doesn't tell me if it's po oh, it does here. The enthalpy of solution is positive. Ooh, is it? Okay. If the enthalpy of solution is positive, that means it's the green, right? So let's get rid of that and say D is gonna be here, right? So now we're supposed to rank these in terms of increasing energy. Can you see now A is the lowest? D is the next, B is the next yet, and then C, right? Can you see that's what's going on? Okay, so if that's true, let's go over here. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Let's go here and say A, D, B, C, okay? Would heat be absorbed or released if the system moved from stage C to say stage D? Is that good or bad, right? Can you see we're taking two things that are spread out and we're putting them together? And things like to be together, right? So things like to be together, that's gonna release energy. That is exothermic, it's going downhill. All right, so that's released. And then, ah, going from C to D, check uh, what force would oppose or favor the system. What force would oppose or favor? Well, dispersion is always, anytime we've got two particles that are coming together that have got uh, electrons in them, then there's gonna be a dispersion force, right? But what are we getting out of this, okay? So it looks like we're getting methanol. What's the forces? We're allowing now methanol to interact with water, right? And if that's true, we're gonna have hydrogen bonding, right? Let me go back over to my whiteboard. Do you remember now? Let's go, just a second here. Right, you know, Right, we spent some time already on intermolecular forces. Right, a, a hydrogen that's bonded to an electronegative element, boom. Uh, when it gets a chance to interact with another oxygen, or rather another inter, inter, uh, electronegative element, that is called a hydrogen bond, right? So it's this oxygen and this hydrogen that makes a hydrogen bond. That hydrogen, by the way, has got to be bonded to another oxygen. This one would not make a hydrogen bond, right? So this is a hydrogen bond, okay? And we also have dipoles, right? Because there's a polar bond and there is a polar bond. What am I doing here? No, it's the other way, sorry. It's that way, okay? So we have dipoles, dipole interaction, and hydrogen bonds, Okay, and dispersion, dipole force. There's no ions in there, there's no metals in there, and there's no covalent bonding forces. Okay, so it's those three. All right, so hopefully that's helpful. And uh, if you like, we'll do another example uh, soon. Correct, see that? I love that green. Okay, hope that's helpful. See you soon.